Okay, well, for those of you tuning in, that's probably one of the uh, shortest LGHA broadcasts in history. I uh, apologize about that. I, I pressed the wrong button. And uh, so I'm fixing it now. All right, let's see. So now with, with, with that set away. Okay, so let's see. Looks like I'm back on air again. All right, very cool. Uh, let me see here. Uh, okay, so let's do this again. I wanna share my screen, uh, share audio, maximize clip. Okay, there we are. So we'll go here. E mai la o keo ta Sot sun ter na ya sok san Tuen kwam kun kong mong jai kan ไอ้ปีเก่านั้นพอพาไปปีใหม่แล้วคนดีขอจงสุขคิดจิตแจ่มใสมีความคิดต้องการสิ่งใดก็ขอให้ได้ดังใจ
So here, let me turn that off. Okay, and go back to share the screen again. All righty, so let's do from the beginning. Okay, so I thought tonight I would come out and do the English version for our English speaking audience to touch on the points that uh, Molly made with her broadcast a few days ago, or was it yesterday? Um, before I begin the broadcast, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, <clears throat> do me a favor. Uh, please share this broadcast on your uh, Facebook personal page. So why don't everybody go ahead and uh, take a couple minutes to do that now. And I will do that too. So somebody, let me say. Uh, okay, where is the share button? Uh, where? Okay, so if you can just go ahead and do me a favor and then uh, share the broadcast on your personal page, uh, I would appreciate that very much. Uh, this is an important message that we need to get out to the community, uh, not just the Lao community, but um, our community at large. Uh, and the reason why it's important is because it's a big, big issue that we have been uh, fighting for quite some time now. Uh, I know that the um, some of the community members in Virginia have been fighting this battle for the last 20 plus years. So let me just do one quick thing here before I continue. I need to change my setting to turn off the uh, notifications. Otherwise, I'll just get more uh, interruptions coming. There we go. That should do it. All right. So that said, why don't we get started? The web of deceit. So <clears throat> first we're gonna take a look at, uh, it's kind of a recap of you know, the, the different actors that are involved in this game. Um, from the beginning, we have Janda, uh, Mrs. Sampai. He's the deputy abbot of Wat Lao Buddha Wong has been around for about 25, 30 years. The next person is Mr. Buta, uh, who's recently moved to Texas, mm -hmm. but he was a board of directors for many, many years with Wat Lao Buddha Wong mm -hmm. and his involvement with Chanda. And the other person here worth no talking about is uh, Eileen Tognini. So Eileen Tognini came into the picture uh, around 2003. Uh, she is the general counsel for Wat Lao Buddha Wong Board of Directors. She is the person that uh, takes care of um, the SEC incorporations. She takes care of the legal paperwork uh, for Wat Lao Buddha Wong. Uh, but not only that, she's also the, the treasurer and she's also a board of directors uh, with Wat Lao Buddha Wong since 2003. In 2006, the three stooges, uh, Janda, Buta, and Eileen, uh, went to modify the Wat Lao Buddha Wong bylaws. And they did three things with the bylaws that led to the issues that we're having today. The first thing they did was they removed the members' voting rights. So, you know, goodbye members, you, you don't have a say. Uh, she also went to remove the General Assembly's voting rights. So goodbye General Assembly, you no longer have uh, authority to um, uh, pick your future. And the third thing that she did was they removed the six board seats that belong to the General Assembly. So the, the community after 2006 found duct tape over their mouth. They can't really uh, have, they have, they don't have a lot to say because their, their voting rights have been removed. The general assemblies have duct tape over their mouth. Uh, they have no long, they no longer have the power to express their opinions or set the direction of how they want to see the nonprofit uh, serves the community. And of course, the six board seats that belong to the general assembly, that's also been removed. And so over the last 10 plus years, uh, 
I would say about 15 years since Eileen came into power with Bhuta and Chanda, the three of them made changes to the bylaws to concentrate power unto themselves. So just imagine uh, us waking up tomorrow and uh, the Bill of Rights have been removed from the Constitution. Uh, just imagine what that's going to be like uh, for all of us as private citizens in the United States. Now, Congress can uh, amend the, the Constitution. Just because they can, it doesn't mean they should. So in the very same essence here, the outrage from the community is very simple. These three changed the bylaw to concentrate power unto themselves. Let that sink in for a second. Mm -hmm. What follows is these three people have been operating what Lao Buddha Wong, a public a public nonprofit as if they were operating a private foundation. That means there's no transparency, there's no accountability, there hasn't been uh, financial records being produced, uh, the meeting minutes, the bylaws, all these changes happen in a very much like a cloak and dagger style. So hidden away from the public. The only time the only time that the community became aware of the 2006 bylaws was when it first appeared in legal documents filed by August McCarthy, the attorney for uh, Wat Lao Buddha Wong. Okay? So as you can imagine, the outrage from the community is well placed. These three people are running what Lao Buddha Wong that have assets uh, over a million dollars as if they're running a private foundation with no transparency, no reporting to the general public, no specific use of donations coming in and funds going out. In the court document that was filed in the lawsuit against seven named defendants, Eileen Tagnini claims that Wat Lao Buddha Wong brings in an annual donation of $300,000 a year. Over the last 10 years, mm -hmm. that's $3 million. So that's $3 million over the last 10 years. And if you were to look at Wat Lao Buddha Wong from the moment that she took over, there hasn't been new constructions. There has not been new temples being built, no new buildings, no fencing, no paved roads, anything that the community can point to and say, yep, that's where our $3 million have gone to. It's gone to building a new community center, for example. It's gone to creating enrichment programs such as language classes, culture classes, Buddhist courses, none of that, none of that. So the community has been scratching their head bald, trying to figure out what happened to all the money. And when the community started to ask more questions, these three board of directors decided they were going to sue the community members, seven of them for $5.45 million. Now there's other players here, picture as well. Uh, Kuba Anta is a brother of and uh, you have another monk in Utah, Ned, who's a big supporter of Janda. And Ned's opinion about sexual misconduct here is that if the penetration is halfway, then it's not considered a sexual misconduct. Uh, that's laughable at its face. I have no idea what his frame of reference is. Uh, obviously, he probably came up with that out of thin air. Uh, we know that to be untrue. Uh, we also have uh, San Kian, who's been a long time uh, right-hand man to Janda for many, many years. But recently, uh, around April of 2019, Janda handpicked new board of directors. And Anta, his brother, is one of them. Um, San Kian is picked as the VP as well as the treasurer. Uh, you have Mr. Na. Uh, as the vice president of the new board. 
Uh, Eileen continues to serve as a secretary and also as a board director. Then you have Wei um, Paiwan. Nope. Paiwan. What's her name anyway? Anyhow, um, she's part of the board of directors as well, and she's been very, very vocal against the community. Some additional players that have been handpicked to be part of the new board of directors. And then you have Mina. Now, Mina's story is quite interesting. She's been a long time uh, around Jenna for many, many years. Uh, she's purported to have done translations for him, uh, interpretation services for him. She's also taking care of a few other personal things on, on his behalf. Uh, the interesting um, uh, dy dynamic between Mina and Ong Ta and um, his uh, Janda's other brother uh, of here, who's no longer a monk, uh, but was a monk at Wat Lao Buddha Wong. Um, the community have since suspected foul play between these three. It's almost like a love triangle. Uh, we have had community members uh, speak up uh, to that effect, uh, stating that there has been an inap inappropriate uh, relationship between the two monks and this woman, uh, Mina. Uh, in fact, the two brothers uh, got into a spat and, and uh, I think got into a fist fight over her, All right. Um, of course, Ata is not uh, the kind of monk that you would expect either. Uh, he got drunk <laughs> and uh, drove a car, uh, crashed it, and um, uh, really hurt himself uh, as a result of that. Uh, in addition, um, he's been talking to uh, different community members. Uh, one reported that Anta was asking this individual to see if he would co-sign uh, for a loan mm. for purchase of a house. And when, was, when he was asked, well, where would you get the down payment? Uh, he says that I have a briefcase of $250,000. So as we all know, uh, Buddhist monks is not a paid profession. Uh, you, you don't go to work from nine to five and you get a salary. So how does it come to be that a monk would be walking around $250,000 of cash in a briefcase to buy a house, right? So that's, that's a really uh, interesting, um, something that we need to probably dig into later uh, this year. The next person to come into the picture here is August McCarthy. August McCarthy came into the picture around August of mm, September, August of September, he's been around, but when he was hired, I think it was around October, he was hired as a, an attorney for Wat La Buddha Wong. He is the attorney to represent Wat La Buddha Wong in the lawsuit against uh, seven community members. And more recently, we see John S. Wilson pop into the picture, who is a personal attorney to uh, Janda. And of course, Wilson has his own personal attorney as well. And so as you can see, uh, over the course of the last eight months, more and more attorneys are becoming uh, coming into the picture. And of course, we have, uh, you know, Janda's social media team, uh, probably subcontract out to Bun and uh, Dr. Tong. Both of these are the hosts for Lao for Lao uh, talk show. And it's really not a talk show. It's more like a propaganda machine. And of course, um, there's a relationship between Bun and William, they're related. And so I'm hoping that this gives you a better picture of all the players that are involved from China side of the house. So given all these transgressions that we've seen from Janda, um, we know that there's also a relationship with another monk. Uh, his name is Numai. Uh, Numai is quite an interesting character. Uh, he was uh, sponsored here to the United States uh, through Janda, and Eileen is also an immigration attorney. So she handles a lot of the immigration cases for Janda that bring people from overseas to, uh, to Wat Lao Buddha Wong as a monk. Uh, most of those people that he brought over from overseas, they are no longer at the temple. 
they came in, they did whatever they had to do. Um, once they get their legal residency, they leave the temple and they move on to something else. Some have moved on to get married. Some have moved on to start a family and so on and so forth. Nguyen is a special case. He still claims to be a monk and he dresses like a monk, but our communities uh, have been looking into Numai's background and what they find is that he does own a house and he doesn't live at Wat La Wong, but he owns a house, he stays at his house. And then when there's ever a special uh, event, uh, he would uh, show up uh, to participate. So now some of you may say, well, what's wrong with that picture, David? Well, monks aren't supposed to do that. Okay, not Buddhist monks. Uh, it goes against the precepts the oath that they have taken. And Numai is uh, certainly one of the monks that we should be uh, watching very carefully in 2021 because Janda, for all of his transgressions, have been defrocked by the Virginia community September 19th, 2020. And you may have seen some of the video footage that we showed earlier with the slideshow. That was the defrocking for Janda. Uh, Ming Sisupan. Um, he is the first monk in U.S. history to be defrocked. Let me repeat that again. Janda is the first tainted monk in U.S. history to be defrocked. So what's all the fuss about then, right? So you have on the left, Janda and his board of directors. Uh, again, you see Eileen here, still the treasurer. Uh, she's been around since 2003. Uh, the person on the left-hand side, on Tha, that's Janda's brother. Uh, San Kian has always been Janda's right-hand man. Uh, he's also their special camera person for special events. Uh, he's also the uh, Wat La Budabong social media, as well as the media uh, person for many, many years. Uh, Le Pai Van, Pai Palavan. Uh, she recently came in as the board of directors, but she's been a longtime supporter of Janda for many, many years. And the same holds true for the rest of these boards. So um, Buta resigned uh, from Wat La uh, mm -hmm. upon tremendous community pressure. He moved to Texas, but he was still the board of directors and the community wanted to understand uh, how he's servicing the community, uh, having lived in a different state. And of course, you know, he, he resigned, uh, which is the right thing to do, to give power to the local communities to be masters of their destiny. But unfortunately, uh, these people that have been selected or handpicked to be board of directors were not elected by the congregation. They were appointed by Jan Da. So this is a board of directors full of his cronies, his brother, his right hand man. Uh, this woman has been supporting Jan Da for many years. Uh, the picture of the gentleman next to her, that's her husband. Uh, he is the supervisor of uh, Voices of America, Lao group, Lao Dysphoria group. And he himself has pretty much censured uh, the Wat Lao Buddha Wong scandal. Uh, the Washington Post covers it. Uh, we've been talking about it, but in his opinion, uh, he refuses to cover the scandal. And <laughs> the, the reason why, I believe the reason why he chose not to cover it is because if he does, it would expose his wife's involvement in the Wat Lao Buddha Wong scandal. Obviously, um, his wife will not allow that to happen, right? Is it right? Absolutely not. It actually goes against his professional conduct. He's a news reporter. You don't get to make a, you don't get to judge the story. You get to just report it, okay? Uh, Paisan, if you're listening, do your damn job. All right, so then we have Bun and uh, Tong here, uh, both of these individuals have been on air and they have been launching attacks after attacks against uh, our elders in Virginia. They have been attacking my wife, myself, and 
LGA officers uh, for a very long time now, uh, at least at least a little bit over nine months. On the right hand side, LGAJ is basically the front uh, facing organization uh, to represent the community. So I am a board of directors. Uh, one of them, uh, Na Bun Jan, is also a board of directors, and Lung Singh is a board of directors as well. And I Paul is the chairman of the board. Uh, we have our executive officers here. So we have quite a bit of people uh, from the community that have volunteered their time and nobody's getting paid. Uh, nobody from LGHA is getting paid. But as much as you like to think that uh, we are getting paid for the work that we do, uh, in fact, what I'm gonna do and what my wife, uh, my wife will do is we will donate our salary. We will donate our salary from LGHA to you, to your show. So expect a check for zero dollars and zero cents. Again, LGHA is a volunteer basis. All of us come together and we work really, really hard to uh, support the community in Virginia, okay? So because the lawsuit that was launched against seven named individuals, uh, now you have a bunch of attorneys coming on board, okay? So I, again, uh, Eileen is an attorney uh, from Florida. She is not licensed in Virginia to practice law. Uh, she can practice immigration law and she can practice social security disability law um, in Virginia, but outside of that scope, she is not a licensed attorney, which means they have to go and hire August McCarthy. So August McCarthy is the lead attorney uh, on the lawsuit against the seven named defendants. John Wilson is now in the picture because he is a personal attorney to Chanda. So how many deputy abbots in the United States or around the world do you know of who surrounds himself with three attorneys? I can't think of one. Maybe you can, but I can't think of one. So this entangled web that Janda has weaved around these attorneys, I hope that one day they would wake up, uh, common sense will prevail and realize that they're on the wrong side of history. And that unless you're getting paid like McCarthy or Eileen, I don't know if she's getting paid, there's some benefits coming from that. And John Wilson, unless these are paid attorneys, I can't seem to understand what it is that they get out of this because Janda has already been defrocked. He's no longer respected as a monk in the United States as of September 19th, 2020. So what reasons do they have? What reasons do they have to join forces with him to cause more damage to the Virginia community? That I cannot figure out. So Mr. John Wilson, if you see this broadcast, um, you're more than welcome to, to call in and explain yourself. Uh, the same goes for you, August McCarthy and Eileen Tognini. Uh, we'll give you an opportunity to come out and, and give us your side of the story. And the same goes for, for Janda as well, but we know that's not gonna happen. And of course, uh, we don't know who this person is, but we know that Wilson has his own personal attorney as well, okay? So how many attorneys are we looking at around Janda? Four that we know of, right? And so this is the kind of intimidation uh, that you know, Janda is accustomed to launching against the uh, communities. Um, when the community members um, started to ask questions about you know, the loans that were taken out in 2017 and loans that were taken out in 2012. In 2012, it was $660,000. In 2017, it was $570,000, um, $570, excuse me. Um, guess what happened to some of the community members? 
Eileen took it upon herself to issue a no trespass order starting in August, September, October, November, over 20 no trespass orders against the community. Why? Because they were asking questions that made them mm. uncomfortable. Why did you take out the loan? How was the money being used? It's a substantial amount of, of, of loans uh, over the last you know, 10 years, $660,000 in 2012. And there's no been no instructions at what La would Wong. So the community members obviously have vested interests here because for every dollar that goes into what La would Wong in a form of a donation, when that money is being used to pay for the interest of the loan, right? So when you're taking out a loan, there is a cost to borrowing. So Eileen, you're the treasurer. Uh, you have to exercise uh, fiduciary responsibility and maximize the contributions from the community. So take the loan from 2012. And if you look at the financial uh, uh, statement they put in, you can see that every single year they were paying around $22,000 in interest, okay? So let's just take a look at that, that loan alone from 2012 to 2000, uh, 2017. If you take $222,000 per year, multiply that by five years, that's over hundred something thousand dollars in interest, okay? That's a hundred thousand dollars that could have gone through uh, language enrichment programs, that could have been $100,000 that have gone to the construction of uh, uh, your uh, community center for, for the elderly, to, for a place of gathering, for them to come and hang out. Uh, it could have gone to road constructions. So that's $100,000 uh, just on the interest of that loan. The second loan, uh, which was taken out in 2017, also carries an interest payment and based on their financial reporting, that's about $24,000 a year, which includes whatever else loans that they were, uh, they're, they're carrying. So these three board of directors took it among themselves to use what law would have property, the assets as collateral for the loan. So obviously when the community members became aware of this, they were gravely concerned because if these three uh, board of directors fail to um, service the loan properly. And if the loan goes into default for whatever reason, the bank can easily come in and seize what La Boda loan, uh, almost pennies for a dollar, right? 50 cents to the dollar. The property is worth a million dollars and it took a loan of $570,000. Now, if I was a banker, that's a really good deal for me, okay? That's a really good deal for me. Now, if you're the community, you're left holding the bag, right? Because you know that for every dollar that you donated to the temple, a fraction of your donation is going to pay for the costs of the loans that these people have taken out, the board of directors have taken out, and they have not disclosed where that money is being spent. So Eileen, uh, you're the treasurer, what compelled you not to rationalize how the community would behave or react when they found out that you guys have taken sub a substantial amount of loan impounding what La Wudawong entity with these financial liabilities? I mean, are you paying for the interest? Is Janda paying for the interest? Obviously not because he's not getting a salary, uh, although there might be some other things that uh, he does in the background to, to make money, but who's paying for the loan? If not for the community, you are using a public entity to finance whatever the heck it is you guys are doing that money. And that's just wrong on so many different levels. So in your lawsuit against the named defendants to say that they were committing conspiracy and that's why the people stopped coming to the temple to donate. Um, Eileen, here's what you don't understand about our culture. We are a very, very tight knit family. When you issue 
I'll take this as an example. If you issue my wife a no trespass order and she's no longer welcome to go to your temple, guess what? Me, as her husband, I am not going to go. And you know what else happens, Eileen? Our cousins aren't going to go because they're not welcome there either. My uncle's family, my aunt's family, my brother's family, his family, his in-laws, second cousin, third cousin, fourth cousins. Do you get what I'm getting at? One trespass order equals to 15 to 20 people that have now feel unwelcome at Wat Lao Buddha Wong. So add all of that up, okay? Let's just say take an average of 20. 20 times 20 is 400 people. That's 400 people that aren't gonna come to the Wat Lao Buddha Wong temple anymore because of what you did, Eileen. So look yourself in the mirror, look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself this question. Who really is a conspirator, right? The finger points to you, lady. The finger points to you. So obviously the community will need legal support, right? None of us are lawyers. And so by the grace of God, uh, the universe, the powers that be have blessed us with some really strong and talented uh, attorneys. Douglas Bywater is um, a partner of uh, Tate and Bywaters in Virginia. He has over 30 years of experience in uh, litigation. Uh, we have Thomas Urban, who is a personal attorney for Holung Suksumbun. Uh, he's also named in the lawsuit. Uh, we have Brett Vinson, uh, who is the attorney uh, representing six named defendants. Uh, under the sponsorship of Douglas Bywater. So Douglas is still the lead attorney. And we have Brett and Ben working on the case for uh, Kuba Som uh, as uh, the, the attorneys. Uh, so, so Ben Adler is, is the lead attorney for Kuba Som's case. And of course, uh, Brett Vincent is helping to coordinate that because of uh, Brett's background in terms of his experience. He did serve as a missionary with the Cambodian uh, community for many, many years. He speaks Cambodian fluently. Uh, he's learning to speak Lao now. So there's also a language barrier, as most of us know, uh, between the attorneys, uh, as well as the families and the community members. So Brett has been kind of that glue. But uh, Douglas is the, Douglas Bywater is the lead attorney on the seven, uh, on the lawsuit against the community. And Ben Adler is the lead attorney uh, for Kuba Som's case. And of course, Urban is the attorney to represent uh, Lung Suksumbun. And of course, between uh, you know, these two guys, they, they talk quite a bit. Uh, of course, you know, between these two guys, they talk quite a bit, right? And then of course, um, Mr. Douglas uh, Bywater is the lead uh, attorney on these cases. All right. So, just to kind of recap of who the players are here. Again, August McCarthy is the attorney for Wat Lao Budabong. He was hired back in uh, October of last year. Uh, to date, we believe that his legal bills are in access of $35,000. Uh, Eileen Togdini, she is the legal counsel for Wat Lao Budabong since 2003. She is not, she is not licensed in Virginia. Uh, however, she has you know, been involved in other legal matters for Wat Lao Buddha Wong, uh, including Kuba Som's case uh, back in 2011 when, when the accident happened. And then of course, the subsequent lawsuit that took place between 2011 to 2015, when it was finally settled, uh, she was compensated $52,000 for her involvement. Uh, and she has over the years since 2003 handled multiple immigration cases for Janda. So we don't know how much she was compensated as a immigration attorney. Uh, obviously, if there is an exchange of money, there would be a conflict of interest as a board of director for Wat Lao Buddha Wong and her receiving self-benefit because of her involvement uh, as such. 
Um, she's provided legal support to the What La Would Won lawsuit as it is today. And she does, um, she has sent an invoice to Janda and where she disclosed her full legal support in access of $50,000 to date, okay? Uh, John Wilson is Janda's personal attorney uh, in the Wat Lao Wudu lawsuit and also in uh, Kuba Som's civil case. So we don't know if John Wilson is doing this pro bono or if he's being compensated, but here's the reason why the community is very interested in what's going on. Uh, again, this is opportunity cost, right? So the legal cost thus far is in excess of $85,000, okay? That, again, it comes back down to how money is being used and being spent by the board of directors. Uh, remember when I talk about the, the cost of the loan, the first loan of $660,000, the interest alone is over hundred something thousand dollars. And the interest on the second loan of 570,000, which is about $24,000 a year, that's an additional hundred something thousand dollars. So just the interest alone since 2012, to when the loan matures in 2022, you're looking in access of $200,000 uh, being spent on the cost of financing. Add on top of this now, an additional $85,000 on top of money that's being spent for their own personal benefit, mm. right? Janda's benefit, which means now you're looking at an access of $300,000 that's being spent on legal fees, as well as financing. How do these things benefit the community? They do not. They do not. And it's no wonder, Chanda, in case you're wondering, I'll make it very, very simple for you. The community has lost faith and confidence in your ability to take care of community interests. $300,000 could go to build a new building specifically to train and teach children in Lao language classes. The community has been asking for that for many, many years and you have not provided it. Instead of spending $300,000 to in provide enrichment programs for the community, what did you do? You instead took $200,000 to go pay the cost of borrowing interest plus an additional $85,000 to go what? Pay your damn attorneys. All this could go away, Chanda. Just drop the damn lawsuit. Fortunately, we have our angels. Uh, again, the, uh, the uh, law firm Tate Bywater Law is a, a law firm in Virginia that is representing the community in two lawsuits. Uh, ben is the lead attorney on Kuba Som's case. Uh, he's doing that pro bono. Uh, Thomas Urban is the attorney for Lung Suk. And Brett Winston is representing or working very closely with the named defendants. Of course, he reports, you know, with the exception of Thomas, uh, who, who is from a different law firm, uh, Ben reports to Doug Bywater and Brett Vinson reports to Doug Bywater, who is the lead attorney in both cases. All right, so let's go back and review this one more time, okay? So we know that these actors that have been in Janda's corner for so many years, right? So Eileen, Buta, Janda, okay? The three of them are responsible for the two loans that have been taken out in 2012 and 2017. The interest payments on both loans combined by the time the second loan matures in 2022 will be in excess of 200 something thousand dollars a year. That is money that's been taken from the community and given to a banking institution. Let me repeat that again. That's over $200,000 that will be taken from the community and given to the institution that loaned them the money. It's no wonder the community are so upset about this because that's $200,000 that could have gone for programs that would benefit the community. 
In addition to that, now you have him, August McCarthy, and you have now have Eileen and John Wilson coming into the picture. Now they have legal fees that they have to pay. And we talked about the legal fees being in excess of $85,000 so far, right? What does Eileen stand to gain from this, this lawsuit? What does McCarthy stand to gain from this? And what does John Wilson stand to gain from all this, right? All that money is going to the attorneys. It is not going to, to enrichment programs like language programs, dance programs, music programs that could help bridge the generational gap between the boomers, X generation X and millennials. So that money is going to attorneys because under his leadership and under her leadership as the treasurer, Eileen is taking money away from the Lao community. Okay, there's no other way to interpret that, right? Now you can sit here and say, oh no, that's what I'm doing, David. But at the end of the day, then who is receiving the most benefit from your uh, involvement with Wat Lao Buddha Wong, Eileen? Uh, it's very clear to me that the banks are making a huge benefit and your attorney friends are making a huge benefits. So who stands to gain from all of this? It's you and your friends. Who stand to lose in all of this? The Lao community in Virginia, in DC, Maryland, and Virginia stand to lose the most. I think you need to resign. You need to resign and Jenda, you need to get the hell out, okay? I promise you this, Eileen and Jenda, we are not going to stop. LGHA is not going to stop. We will defend the community until our last breath. So you and your new board of directors, you guys need to realize who you're hurting here. Bakna, I'm talking to you now. Look at the numbers. Look at the loan interest that your friends are paying off to the banks. Look at the amount of money that Janda is siphoning away from the Lao community and giving to the attorneys. Over $300,000, Bakna. Over $300,000. And here you are supporting this stupid I take that back. He's not stupid. He's very conniving. Okay. Janda is very conniving and very manipulative. In fact, now just, just take a step back from all of this. Okay. And ask yourself this question. Why is this happening? Okay. Sankian, you do the same thing. You're part of the Lao community in Virginia. You sit down with Paiwan, Palawan, sit down with all of these people that have been nominated now as part of the board of directors, it is your responsibility now as a board of directors to look into this and begin to ask yourself the question, what can we do with $300,000 to benefit our community? What can we do? I'll give you a hint, get together and vote to kill the lawsuit. Just drop the damn lawsuit, okay? Because the lawsuits, as long as it keeps on going, your side of the fence will have to spend money on the attorneys and the communities will have to spend money uh, to defend themselves. So both sides are losing. What do you hope to gain from it? I said before, the community are not going to go back to the temple as long as their brother feels unwelcome, as long as their cousin is unwelcome, as long as these people that have the stupas at the temples cannot go visit it because if they step foot on the ground, they stand to be arrested. They have fear of being arrested. Just like Kubala was arrested for trespassing, even though he lived at the temple, for 16 years. Kubala was arrested and put in jail for one day. Eileen, you're an idiot. You do not know anything about our Buddhism. 
our practices. You're such an idiot. You issue Kuba La a no trespass order when he's a resident of the temple. You don't do that. You're such an incompetent attorney. You know that he is protected by the landlord tenant law. What you should have done, Eileen, is you should have gone to court to secure an unlawful detainer. That is the only time that you can evict a tenant. You guys, the new board of directors, all right? You got one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? If all of you came together and say, listen, we want to drop the lawsuit, it will happen because you have the majority vote. And if you know nothing about being a board of directors for a nonprofit, then you need to resign and have somebody else run it. You cannot take on this job and plead ignorance. You have the legal duty of care. You have the legal duty of obedience and you have the legal duty of loyalty. Loyalty meaning you serve the congregation. What now would the wrong Buddhist congregation? The members. It's no wonder nobody goes to Wat Lao Buddha Wong, and it's no wonder it's turning into a ghost town because you idiots are running a private foundation like Jandai is running a private foundation. And that is not the case. Wat Lao Buddha Wong is a public nonprofit organization. The moment you feel that you run it the way you want to run it, don't expect people to just walk up to you and give you their donations. It doesn't happen that way. A donation is an exchange of trust. Until you can build trust with the community, until you can build confidence with the community, it's gonna to continue to be a ghost what? Is that what you want? Is that what you meant, Na, by saying you don't want any more conflict within the community? Look yourself in the mirror. Look at how many times the community has come out to what Lao Buddha want to protest. If you don't understand what that is all about, you can't really tell your ass from the hole in the ground. All righty. So, Eileen, McCarthy, Wilson, Buta, all of these people on the board here, feel free to send me an email, contact me through Facebook. And if you need to correct the record because I've said something that was wrong, I am here, I'm here to listen. I'm here to listen to all of you uh, from your perspective if I got something wrong. Okay, Bun, that includes you too. Dr. Tong, that includes you as well too, all right? You can reach me in Facebook and Bun, uh, you can unblock me if you wanna get a hold of me. That goes same for you, Dr. Tong. We can't talk to each other when you block me, okay? So if I misstated anything in tonight's broadcast, you know how to get a hold of me, let's talk. That ends our broadcast for tonight. Have a good evening.